what's good y'all it's bull ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out the shoots of japanese wrestling from uh age of wrestling this should be a very hard-hitting and intense video uh japanese wrestling they they kind of operate differently when it comes to american style wrestling a lot of times they be laying in the stiff shots they they will not hold back they will lay in the kicks lay in the slaps sometimes lay in the punches it's it's a different world over there um <laughs> definitely a, a lot dangerous a lot more dangerous they don't play that over there it's kind of a a respect thing to really lay into your opponent to let people know you are out there legitimately trying to <laughs> send someone to the gulag so we're gonna check out some of these um uh, these shoot style moments in japanese wrestling appreciate all love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man japanese professional wrestling or pororesu is renowned for its captivating blend of athleticism drama and hard-hitting action but yeah. every now and then the world of pororesu takes an unexpected turn blurring the lines between scripted entertainment and genuine combat in this video we'll delve into the intriguing oh phenomenon of japanese wrestling occasionally crossing into real fights or as the cool kids say into a shoot brother yeah. So join us today on this journey through the unpredictable world of pro wrestling, where scripted storytelling sometimes gives way to real life intensity. These are the shoots of Japanese wrestling. Our first incident is to do with the Dirt Bike Kid and the Great Sasuke. In the summer of 1999, a Japanese professional wrestling promotion called Michinoku Pro invited Dirt Bike Kid to participate in a mask tournament where all the competitors had to wear masks. One of the first matches on the bracket was the Dirt Bike Kid versus the Great Sasuke. For the Dirt Bike Kid, this was an important match for him because not only was he facing one of Japan's GOATs, but he was also going up against the owner of Michinoku Pro Wrestling. Okay. To the Dirt Bike Kid, he found it odd that he was selected to wrestle in this tournament because he didn't consider himself a masked wrestler. He also seemed to be rather upset that his match was projected to be quick with Sasuke winning by submission. In an act of rebellion, when Dirt Bike Kid entered the ring, he immediately took off the mask, making the great Sasuke super heated before the oh, match had even started. Wow. The match started out normally, but about a minute or so into it, the Dirt Bike Kid is hitting all the offense, doing many, many over-the-top high spots. After a few moves, Sasuke starts to get a little bit annoyed, half-assing it but still selling. Eventually, the great Sasuke snaps and he stops taking offense and starts Whoa. kicking the hell out of Whoa. Dirt Bike Kid oh, in the legs shit. and in the torso. This was especially painful because the Dirt Bike Kid was nursing an injury on his ribs. After kicking the crap out of Dirt Bike Kid, Sasuke picks him up and puts him in a standing chokehold. The Dirt Bike Kid starts flailing his arms around like crazy and the ref calls for the bell. After this match, you could tell that the Dirt Bike Kid was messed up. Sasuke lingered around the ring, staring at the Dirt Bike Kid. As the Dirt Bike Kid stood up, Sasuke put his hands up in a boxing stance ready to throw down. The Dirt Bike Kid put his hands up for mercy and extended his hand for a handshake, but Sasuke just puts his guard down and denies the handshake, exiting wow. the And the next shoot on this list is Andre oh, the Giant. Oh yeah, he was pissed. Nah, damn, he started laying in them stiff kicks. Woo! He, he, was, he was choking him, bro. He was like legit choking this guy. He's like, all right, bro. He's tapping like, all right, bro. All right, all right, man. And let me go. Damn. Time versus Akira Maeda. Right next to Brock Lesnar on the list of people a wrestler wouldn't want to be in a shoot with would be Andre the Giant. Yeah. Especially a drunker than usual Andre. Uh -oh. Like the one that turned up to face Akira Maeda for New Japan in 1986. Drunk Andre didn't play nice, but neither did Maeda a man with a reputation for being difficult to do business with if things didn't go his way. Before the match, neither man would agree to lose, but they went into the ring with the understanding that the 8th wonder of the world, Andre the Giant, would have his hand raised at the end of the night. According to legend, New Japan boss Antonio Inoki, who had had issues with Maeda in the past, let Andre know that his opponent that night could use a little straightening out. Come bell oh. time, the two didn't have a plan or a proper finish in place and it was apparent from the beginning that they weren't on the same page. Hell, they weren't even reading the same book. Andre lumbered around and tried to swat the smaller opponent away Damn. while Maeda successfully completed a couple of takedowns and tried to wear the giant down with some very real leg kicks. It went on for an eternity, much to the bewilderment of the crowd. Eventually, Andre either got bored or realized he needed another pint or 12 and lay down on the mat before singing for Akira to cover him. Inoki stormed out and tried to get things going the way they should, but his presence infuriated Maeda, who decided to walk out instead. Whoa. The match was officially declared a no contest. The next shoot on this list Whoa, also involves Akira. Whoa, what was that? He just said, fuck it. 
Go ahead, pit me, bro. I don't, I'm tired, nigga. I'm ready to get me another drink. <laughs> what was that? And Maeda. And this is the shoot that he had with Ricky Choshu in 1997. Riki Choshu and Akira Maeda were both prominent figures in the world of Japanese wrestling and in New Japan pro wrestling. During this scheduled match, tensions between the two escalated and the match began to devolve into a real fight. Uh -oh. While Choshu was putting another wrestler in a submission hold, Maeda came up around him and kicked him in the Whoa. face, making his eye bleed and breaking his orbital bones. Damn. Choshu no sold this, but after this, after realizing what had just happened, he flipped. The exact cause of the altercation isn't definitively known, but it is believed that it stemmed from a combination of personal and professional rivalries, differing wrestling philosophies, and possibly disagreements over the match's outcome. The brawl between Choshu and Maeda in the ring was unscripted and intense. It spilled outside the ring, and other wrestlers and staff had to intervene to separate the two. This incident had significant Damn. repercussions in the world of Japanese professional wrestling, as Akira Maeda was subsequently fired from New Japan Pro Wrestling. The next incident is hey bro he literally went over there and kicked him in his face bro nah you would have to have the whole roster stop me because fuck this match i'm about to beat the brakes out of you you gonna have to have everybody stop me bro bro hell nah you just hey you just gonna have to have everybody stop me y'all gonna have to escort him out the building he gonna have to leave and y'all gonna have to make sure i don't follow him because i nah that's I don't know what their personal beef is, but don't mid-match just kick me in my face, bro? Ah, oh, nah, bro. Between Act Yasukawa and Yoshiko. It happened in stardom in 2015. Basically, what happened was Yoshiko was apparently jealous of the younger Act's growing popularity, and this caused them to have the most brutal shoot of all time in the ring, where Yoshiko absolutely obliterated Act despite Act trying to fight back. Act Yasukawa was left with a broken cheekbone, fractured orbital bones, a broken nose, and a concussion. Damn. And she had to get surgery for these injuries and spent a few days in the hospital. This incident even caused Act to retire from wrestling altogether Whoa. and caused Yoshiko and other wrestlers from stardom to get fired because of their involvement. That's how serious it was. Whoa. And the next incident is between John Tenta and- Hey, man. Hell nah, bro. Don't be jealous and stop beating. Nah, bro. <laughs> Oh, 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 it's real? Hold on. I'm hopping out that ring and getting a steel chair. I right, bet. Do it. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Kirkpatrick, right across the dome piece. CTE. Like what? Nah. Uh and Koji Katao. This is awful. Japanese bad boy Koji Katao and the man better known as WWE's Earthquake got into a scrap at SWS's Wrestle Dream in Kobe in 1991. The pair of sumo wrestlers had worked against one another two nights earlier on a co-promoted Tokyo Dome event between the WWE and Super World of Sports, supposedly without incident. It was obvious from the off that the two were not cooperating, with Tenta using his massive frame to immobilize his opponent, grabbing a waist lock before taking him to the mat. Katao didn't take too kindly to this, rolling outside for a breather before attempting to hurl a chair into the ring. Oh, they attempted damn. to do a test of strength spot. If y'all saw that table, that's one of them stiff, stiff tables that it's, it's going to take a couple tries to break that. Unless you like someone his size, you may be able to break it on the first try. You may not. Those those tables, yeah, they don't give no, they don't give no way at all. <laughs> but when Katal tried to slap an arm lock, Tenta swatted him away like a grizzly bear. Damn. The referee tried to get things back on track, but neither man was having any of it. Things were breaking down at a very fast pace. Koji Katao, who had caused issues both in the sumo and wrestling worlds before due to his behavior and penchant for tantrums, then lashed out and kicked the referee, Whoa! causing the disqualification. Not content with simply ruining the match, Koji Katao then grabbed the microphone and told the crowd that wrestling was fake and that he refused to lose to Tenta as scripted, suggesting that if it were a real fight, there would only be one winner. He was then escorted away and subsequently wow. left wrestling for a while. Our next incident Damn. is Vader vs Stan Hansen. In February of 1990, in New Japan Pro Wrestling, two of the top Gaijin wrestlers were set to clash in a match with slobber knocker written all over it. IWGP heavyweight champion Big Van Vader and All Japan Triple Crown champion Stan Hansen, both former New Japan heavyweight champions, were the only Western stars at the time and two out of a handful of people to dominate Jesus. the Japanese legend, Antonio Inoki, in the ring. Stan would come down to the ring swinging his signature bull rope. The bull rope had a cowbell at the end. While Vader was getting in the ring, Hansen took a swipe at him with the bull rope, accidentally breaking his nose. 
This sent Vader into a rage, and the two men began to hammer each other with real strikes. Oh, shit. The first five minutes of the match were extremely stiff due to Vader's Damn. frustration and Stan having to defend himself. This is how it went until a stray thumb of sorts caught Vader and popped his eyeball out I of the socket, I, leaving uh, it hanging out slightly on- Yeah, I, I, I think I did uh, uh, watch a clip of this on here. I forgot what video it was. Oh, this makes me cringe. Oh my god. To his cheek. Vader then popped his eye back in and he took his mask off and his eye began to visibly and horrifically swell shut. The two behemoths would then battle it out for another 10 plus minutes until the match would be ruled a double count out with the IWGP Heavyweight Championship staying with Vader. Not only that, but he was also able to hang onto his eye. And the next incident is- Bro, he's wrestling with one eye. His eye literally almost popped out his damn skull. And he had to push it back in. And he's wrestling with one eye. Holy, that's fucking in. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I, oh, my God. It's this like... is Masahiko Kimura and Ricky Dozen. Masahiko Kimura was a world-famous judoka who not only blazed a trail for the creation of MMA in Japan, but his love for pro wrestling was evident. In the 1950s, he created the Japanese Pro Wrestling Association and extended a personal invitation to one of the preeminent wrestling legends, Riki Dozan. He's widely regarded as the father of modern Japanese professional wrestling and played a pivotal role in shaping the wrestling industry in Japan. There's no other man who had an impact on Japanese wrestling as much as Riki Dozan. In the first 15 minutes of the match, Kimura aims a kick at Riki Dozan's midsection and accidentally catches him in the groin. Normally this would be grounds for disqualification, but the match is not meant to end that way, so the referee waves off the infraction. But it's too late because Riki Dozan has seen red. Because of this low blow, Ricky Dozen unleashes his brutality, striking Kimura again and again. Kimura slumps against Gee, the ropes, and Ricky Dozen kicks him twice yeah. in the face oh, with all yeah. of his force. He pulls Kimura into the center of the ring and then stomps his head viciously. Oh, Ricky yeah. Dozen then moves in for the kill as the crowd roars its approval. Another strike is followed by a clubbing blow to the back oh, of Kimura's head, oh, and a final strike oh. hits Kimura in the neck, square in an artery, and he drops like a felled oak. He tries to get up to his feet but is unable. The referee counts to 10, the bow sounds, and the bout that was scheduled to go 60 minutes only lasted less than 15. And the next incident is between Antonio Yeah, bro, he, he started beating him up for real. He, oh, clink, 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 clink. He was, he was catching some real punches, real, real strikes, real kicks. Inoki and the great Antonio. Antonio Inoki was the founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and the company was built on a real sports presentation that emphasized fighting spirit. The organization in its early days was not averse to bring in somebody who didn't fit the typical mold to serve as an attraction. Enter the great Antonio, a ginormous Canadian strongman who dabbled in wrestling for Calgary Stampede promotion, but was more famous for his stunts and feats of strength, like dragging cars by his hair or eating 25 chickens in one sitting. The Great Antonio was brought into New Japan Pro Wrestling in December of That's 1977 insanity. to wrestle Antonio Inoki. The bell rang and there was a stare down between Inoki and the large, out of shape Great Antonio. Following the stare down, Great Antonio put Inoki in a series of incredibly weak headlocks. Three minutes in, Inoki hit Great Antonio with a seemingly big dropkick, but Great Antonio decided to no sell it. The Great Antonio then goaded Inoki into striking his raw rubber wall gut, of which Inoki did, but it had no effect on the monster. Inoki was now getting visibly upset. Just shy of five minutes in, the Great Antonio began clubbing Inoki's back and neck, and Inoki had now had enough. He snapped and went right after the Great Antonio, brutally striking Damn. him in the face. The Great Antonio tried to shield himself, but Inoki executed a perfect single leg takedown and began unloading hard kicks to the Great Antonio. Ooh. Inoki was going so crazy on him that he straight up just stomped him out as the Great Antonio was knocked out and couldn't get up. His face was also bloody. The lesson, don't mess with a legitimate tough guy like Antonio Inoki, yeah. especially in his area of expertise. Damn. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please oh check out our other videos. bro. Oh my, my man's face was just a crimson mask. Oh my God, bro. Yeah. Uh... Much respect to those guys over there, them guys and girls, man. But some of that shit, I ain't gonna lie to you. Kicking someone in the face mid-match, yeah, it sounds about right. Everyone in that locker room is gonna have to hold you back, bro. There's, there's, come on, bro. I don't care what the issue is. Go, go according to what we plan for the match. <laughs> Boys going off script, saying fuck it. <laughs> this is wild. That, that's definitely wild, man. Comment down below. 
let me know uh what was the the wildest thing from this video that you've seen or if you know some any shoot style uh moments from japanese wrestling that wasn't mentioned in this video comment them down below let me know but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel road to 150k and i'm still in speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking it me see y'all on the next one peace